Good evening. Hey, everybody. Welcome to tonight's Thursday Night Happening. I have to say I've been looking forward to this one actually since as long as I can remember because I've been Jewish since as long as I can remember. So uh, tonight is my spin on Jewish music. Now, you know, you ask the question, what is Jewish music? Well, <laughs> I suppose you could say that Jewish music is any kind of music uh, played or written by Jews. And since Jews have been around for a long time, I guess that means just about any kind of music. I mean, when I was brought up as a little kid, so much of the classical music my parents listened to were by Jewish artists. I wasn't even conscious of the fact that so many of the violinists like Yasha Heifetz and Isaac Stern and Nathan Milstein and uh, all of these amazing musicians were all Jewish. Uh, mostly immigrants from overseas, Russia, Poland, Ukraine, like my family was. Uh, and Vladimir Horowitz and Arthur Rubinstein, the great pianists, and so many great classical composers also were Jews, uh, Mendelssohn and um, uh, Camille Saint-Saëns, believe it or not, and uh, many of the French composers, and uh, Ernest Bloch, a modern 20th century uh, Jewish composer, and so much of the film music in Hollywood was written by Jewish composers who were conservatory trained in Europe uh, or people who were born here and are legends in the field like Bernard Herrmann who did all the Hitchcock movies and Elmer Bernstein who did tons of westerns and jeez, uh, I mean, not to mention all the Broadway composers and all the, the, the pop tune writers and uh, so many pop stars. I mean, people like Paul Simon and uh, Barry Manilow, and uh, my God, sorry to mention them in the same breath, but uh, just Billy Joel, I mean, more than I can even count. And as, as a, a kid growing up in New York, I wasn't even conscious of this until later in life when I started realizing how much uh, music in general was was written by, played by, produced by, whatever, uh, by Jewish artists. And so tonight is just a tiny sampling uh, in the uh, in my little uh, Jewish uh, musical delicatessen. And uh, I'm just going to start out with one of the first melodies I ever heard as a child. Uh, my mom would sing it while she was lighting the candles on Friday nights and on Hanukkah. And my grandma sang it first, obviously, and my mom learned it from her. So I'm just going to do a little Jewish, bluish interpretation of it just off the top of my head. And I don't have a yarmulke on, so it's, it's off the top of my head as well. Oh, the, the, the first three words. It's a prayer, the blessing of the candles. And uh, so many Jewish prayers begin with these three words, Baruch Ata Adonai, Blessed art thou, Lord our God. If you know those three words, you know the first three words of about 95% of Jewish prayers.
Thank you very much, and because I know you're out there, and uh, I appreciate your appreciation. I'm starting to get used to this uh, performing for a cyber audience and starting to enjoy it. Uh, you might also notice that I am standing up, and uh, it's kind of funny that I'm doing the Jewish music standing up because when uh, Jews go to a temple service uh, as a mark of respect at the holiest and most sacred times, they stand, as opposed to uh, in church, uh, if it's a very sacred thing, you kneel. And uh, in a church, you take your hat off when you walk in the door. In a Jewish temple, you cover the top of your head, like the Pope, uh, when you walk in the door. So uh, there's some very interesting similarities and differences between uh, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim uh, traditions. Anyway, I'm standing because I got tired of <laughs> sitting down and playing the harmonica sitting. Because it's, you know, it's, it's harder to play sitting down when you really want to let, let go, you know. And uh, I kind of enjoy this, uh, this uh, fake piano that I'm going to be playing tonight, too. It's, it's got a lot of different sounds on it. And uh, so uh, I'm going to play some of those for you. So the next tune that I'm going to play is a, uh, was an international hit song, actually, written by two composers, Israeli guys, I believe, uh, uh, it's called Erev Shel Shoshanim, and it was written by Moshe Dor and Yosef Hadar, I believe are their names. Now, I first became aware of this playing it on a folk album for uh, the great John McCutcheon. Now, obviously, McCutcheon isn't, isn't Jewish, but he heard this song and he loved it, but he didn't know the name of the song, so it got put on the album as Moshe Dor which is actually the name of one of the, <laughs> one of the writers. And so I thought I had played a tune called Moshe Dor. And uh, the instrument that I played it on, it's a beautiful recording called Winter Solstice from 1984 with my friends in Trapezoid, and Paul Reisler producing. Um, I played this instrument right here, which looks like I'm blowing into a shoebox. It's a bass ocarina. And uh, it's, it's the lowest ocarina of this particular family of uh, wooden ocarinas here. So I'm going to start on this. case I forgot, it's called Erev Shel Shoshanim, which means Night of the Roses.
not a prayer. This was actually something people danced to. Even belly dancers danced to it. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks. I see a few little comments. Ah, Abdullah. Oh, thank you. I'm glad I'm making your morning good. And uh, I'm just going to continue here. Uh, I'll answer the comments a little bit later, but I couldn't help catching a little bit of that out of the corner of my eye. I can't see him anymore, but I guess I'll see him in a little while. Okay. So, uh, next on the schedule here, uh, we're going to do a very, very beautiful tune that I learned from my friend Ben Sidron. Now, for those of you who don't know Ben, uh, he's lived all over the world, but he resides in Madison, Wisconsin, and he's kind of a, a force in the music world. Uh, I wouldn't call him a singer-songwriter, although he is a singer-songwriter. He wrote some hit songs for Steve Miller, like... Uh, Oh my God, cowboy, you know, uh, I forgot the name of the tune, uh, you know, the big one and a few other ones as well. And has produced many artists, was good friends with Mose Allison and uh, kind of resembles him as a performer, as a vocalist and pianist. But Ben is also a, a fantastic author and also a scholar on Jewish music of all different sorts because he 
has been inside the music industry and the music world for so long, and he realized after a while how much amazing music had been written and performed and recorded by Jewish artists and made me aware of it, uh, especially, uh, I'd say first, with the recording of this album that he did. And it was a very beautiful album, and he called it Life's a Lesson. I recorded on it in 1994, and he recorded uh, many famous uh, Jewish songs, both liturgical and uh, just in general, you know, things written by Jewish uh, singer-songwriters. Uh, geez, I'm, I'm just talking off the top of my head here. I can't remember all of the tunes, but the next one I'm going to do um, is called Yadid Nefesh, which is on that album. And I was in very good company. Uh, musicians like Randy Brecker and Bob Mincer and Bob Berg and uh, Dave Liebman and uh, uh, Danny Gottlieb and uh, I mean, you just look at the personnel on the cover of this album and you'll see who's on it. It's a who's who of the Jewish jazz world. And of course there are, you know, just countless numbers of Jewish jazz musicians. I mean, look, Benny Goodman, uh, Lee Konitz, uh, Stan Getz, so many of these these guys were Jewish, um, and like I said, growing up and listening to music, I just I didn't make any distinctions between what religion uh, the person who I was listening to held. Uh, and you know, later in life, I started realizing, oh, this guy is, was Jewish, uh, this guy was Christian, this guy was Muslim, whatever it was. It's music brings people together, you know, and uh, that's I hope what I'm doing here tonight. Okay, so I'm just trying to play beautiful stuff that just so happens to be s focused on, uh, centered around this theme of Jewish music, which basically includes anything. So Yadid Nefesh is uh, a poem from the early 17th or late 16th century, a mystical poem uh, welcoming Shabbat, the Sabbath, on Friday evening. Uh, and this musical setting, I asked Ben where it came from, and he said he's not really sure. Because Jewish liturgy is ancient, thousands of years old, and we have a very long tradition of different prayers and commentaries and writings by mystics and rabbis. From all countries in the world all types of Jewish devotional uh, prayer. And I think this music was written sometime in the 1940s. That's what Ben thought. jazz waltz.
All right. Ah, comments, comments. Thank you very much for tuning in, everybody, tonight. I see there's already many comments. So I do want to remind you of our main purpose in doing this, besides bringing hopefully good music to a lot of people, uh, is raising money for the Greater Chicago Food Depository. Now, especially in these times, where the world is definitely a very difficult place uh, due to many circumstances, but especially the pandemic, it's making it impossible for many of us to earn a living. And some people are having trouble putting enough food on the table. And this wonderful organization does exactly that. It gives food, provides food for those who cannot afford to buy food. And it's a Chicago organization. And 91% of the money that they take in goes to buying the food. And we have provided thousands, the money for thousands of meals. I'm very proud of this and it's something very urgently needed. And the situation is not getting a lot better right now, folks. And with winter coming, it's gonna be even rougher. So please uh, find the generosity in your hearts to open up your pocketbooks and make a donation to the Greater Chicago Food Depository. And let me see who's gotten in touch. Who has gotten in touch? Oh, hey, Buzz and Lewis, yeah. Uh, Troy, oh yeah, you're, you're, you're a very faithful listener. I'm, I'm very grateful that you're here. Oh, Aaron, ah, oh, thanks so much. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Ah, oh, Sonia, Shana Tova to you. That's the Jewish Happy New Year greeting, and uh, that is indeed what is coming up. It's Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and that's part of why I'm doing this show tonight. Ah, oh, Mad Cat, hey man, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, Shana Tova, Wayne. And everyone's saying hi to each other. Ah, someone in Louisiana. I hope you're staying dry, my friend. Oh, Jason, thank you so much, man. One of uh, a totally wonderful harmonica player, Jason Rosenblatt. And uh, Ann Feldman. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ann. And Rochelle, ah, Shana Tovo to you. And Roberta, oh, thank you. And Roberta and Geraldo. And Alessio, oh, thank you so much, my friend. Yeah. And Eric. Fisher. Oh, thanks again, Eric, for tuning in. Hey, Ellen. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mark in Seattle. Oh, thanks. Oh, Chris, my former webmaster, a fantastic guy, Chris Sampson. Um, and Abdullah. Ah, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, oh, the bass harmonica. Yeah, <laughs> Rini, I had a request to play it, so I thought, oh, that's the perfect tune for it. Yeah, well, Mad Cat, you haven't heard me play a bass harmonica before, and you might never hear it again. <laughs> oh, oh yes, yes, Winslow, I uh, I stole that G bass out from under your nose. I know. Uh, ah, you have a little bit of natural delay. Yeah, oh, I'm glad everybody is enjoying it so much, and uh, there's more comments coming. Uh, Marilyn Greenfield, thank you. Wayne, oh yeah, wondering what position I'm playing. Oh, I don't remember which tune that was. Probably third position uh, on uh, the uh, tune, you know, Arab uh, Shoshanim. Yeah, the Night of the Roses. Uh, let's keep going. Let's keep rolling them. Our, uh, keep rolling them. Same Cardo uh, from Argentina. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Vittorio, thank you. Saludos to you too. Space Cowboy, thank you, Winslow. I, I forgot the first word of the cat of the uh, of the title. Of course, Space Cowboy, the gangster of love, etc., etc., etc. Ben wrote that song. Yes, he did. Who do I address the PO box to? Uh, me. <laughs> but make out the checks to uh, the Greater Chicago Food Depository. That's the easiest thing to do. But you can send it uh, to our PO box if if people want to write checks. Okay, Julie. The Joker, yes, he wrote that one too. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I think uh, I think we're getting uh, Michael Mendelssohn, harmonica player in Detroit. Ah. You know, uh, it's interesting about the bar mitzvahs. Uh, that's when I first started uh, really feeling the the impact 
of some of the prayer melodies that I had been singing as a kid. And uh, hey, Jim McLaughlin, as always, uh, my love to you, my brother. Yeah. And so um, the next tune I'm going to play after I take a sip of water uh, is one of those uh, very fundamental Jewish prayer melodies. And so I'm going to stand up and go to camera two here. You know, we have a we have a fully staffed crew here at Levy Land Studios. Uh, there are five people pointing things at me and, and holding all sorts of stuff up and telling me, you know, don't forget the sponsors. Uh, I did forget the sponsors. And they forgot me. So, uh, so this, this next piece that I'm going to play for you is one of the most fundamental prayer melodies in the Jewish liturgy. And it's, it's the melody of a blessing that you say that starts with those three magic words, Baruch HaTah Adonai, um, before you read a portion of the Torah. And when I had my bar mitzvah, I was thinking mostly about, oh boy, I can't wait for the party. And of course, I had studied, you know, every Jewish boy when they're 13, they have to do this thing. To one extent or another, you, you read prayers. Sometimes you leave and lead the whole service, but you read a portion of the Torah and the Haft Torah, which is other uh, sacred writings. And you say, you sing all these prayers. And of course, being a good musician, I sang my whole portion. I didn't just read it. I sang it and I learned the special notation system that they have. They called uh, the tropes, the Torah tropes. And uh, there's this melody that goes uh, uh, oh, like this. I'll turn it down. It's very bluesy. It's like minor blues. And uh, these chants and blessings, they try to make them, you know, melodically very simple uh, so that people can uh, daven them, pray them without really thinking so much. It's, it's kind of puts you into a bit of a trance. And so uh, I just really love this melody and uh, I decided that at a certain point in my life, um, I really love, you know, Afro-Cuban music. And uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. And there, there's a ton of Jewish musicians in the, uh, in the Latin jazz world. And uh, I mean, the reason for this, who knows the exact reason, but I, there's one, one thing is that um, a tremendous, a large portion of the Jews of the world did live in Spain until July 31st, 1492, when Ferdinand and Isabella expelled them. And that's when uh, sort of the second diaspora for Jews spreading out all over the world. And a lot of them actually ended up, there was a community of Jews in Cuba. Um, one of my close friends, Norman Savitt, was born in Cuba to his Jewish refugee parents who escaped um, the, the ravages of the Second World War and met in a uh, refugee camp outside of Paris, I believe. So anyway, uh, the Jews are have wandered far and near, you know, all over the world and uh, absorbed the music of various cultures and uh, from wherever they've been. So at a certain point in my life, I started playing a lot of Latin jazz uh, with the group Chevere, Chevere de Chicago, here in Chicago, led by Alejo Poveda, and uh, eventually uh, played, ended up playing with Tito Puente and then Paquito de Rivera, and so I reimagined this Jewish blessing as an Afro-Cuban piece. So I'm going to try to play it for you right now. Let's sort of ease into it.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I'm going to uh, finish off here with one of the most famous uh, songs uh, written by a, a Jewish composer in the 20th century. It was actually a pop hit in the 1930s and 40s made famous by uh, a singing trio of sisters, the Andrews sisters. Um, and this song was written by a man named Shalom Sekunda. Uh, I recorded this actually three times, once with uh, a Jewish cantor who was trying to uh, put a more contemporary spin on Jewish music and wrote a lot of melodies that are used actually in many temples uh, throughout America. Um, and he also recorded this tune. His name was Jeffrey Klepper. Uh, used to be uh, the cantor at a temple here in Evanston, where I live. Um, and also with a, a guy named Henry Shapiro, who was a jazz guitarist and vocalist, uh, lives in Pittsburgh. And he, <laughs> in later years, uh, has become a cantor, which is really wild. I had no idea. He was a swing guitar player, and I played it on his album. And uh, actually, it's a pretty nice version of the tune. I also recorded it with my own band, Acoustic Express, on my label, Walk and Samba Records. And... Uh, and that's kind of the approximate version that I'm going to play, if I can ever find the right harmonica to play it on. 
where did I put it? Oh, I already got it, sir. It's right here. So uh, it's called by mir bis du schön. It means by me, you're beautiful, by mir. And uh, th it was originally written totally in Yiddish for a musical uh, that, that was produced in the Yiddish theater in New York City. And uh, this man, Shalom Sekunda, he wrote lots of music for J Jewish theater and all sorts of classical things. And, but this is the thing that everyone remembers him for, which he feels kind of silly. He felt kind of that it wasn't how he wanted to be remembered. But it was a huge hit, the only hit song in the Yiddish language. And in Yiddish is the, the language spoken by the Jews of Europe. Uh, it's kind of an amalgam of, of German uh, and a little bit of Hebrew and some, some Russian and Polish. It varies in different areas of Europe. But all my relatives, when I was a little kid, they, everybody, all the older relatives spoke Yiddish. And I know a few words. I mean, everyone knows a few words in Yiddish. You know, like, um, I'll, I'll try to think of the less profane ones, like what a shlemiel he is. You know, they, they sound like what they are, you know. Uh, a schmear of, of cream cheese on a bagel. I mean, in New York, where I grew up, there's so many Jews that everybody, Jews and non-Jews alike, know, know lots of Yiddish. So um, it was just, just the language that uh, is very familiar to me from growing up. So by mir bis du shame, it turns out, just a few years ago, my dad, who was a professional singer and is still singing, um, he told me, oh yeah, well, uh, one day uh, I had to go to an audition in Manhattan and I, I had to hurry because I was singing with Shalom Secunda's chorus in Brooklyn. And I said, you sang with Shalom Secunda? He went, yeah, yeah, sure. Like it was no big deal. And I've been playing this song for years and he never even bothered to mention that he played with, that he sang with Shalom Secunda. All right, so have I talked enough? Uh, here is By Mir Bis Du Shane. And I'm going to have to adjust the volume control on my, on my Steinway here. Okay. Uh, make sure I get the wrong harmonicas. I mean the right harmonicas out. Here we go. Upside down. Twice in one show.
I cannot explain to me you are the fairest in the land I could say Bella Bella even Vorderbach each language only tells me how grand you are by me this to shame please let me explain kiss me and say you understand Thank you and good night. Thank you and good night. <laughs> well, I was having way too much fun playing this, and I wish that there were some of you who could have crammed into my music room here and you know filled up the balcony. And I see the balcony seats are actually empty tonight. And I really miss playing. And so I hope that some of you enjoyed some of what I did. And now I'm going to sit down again and talk a little bit more about what we're going to do next week and thank some more of you for your donations and for your texts to me here. Uh, Cindy Rayliss, oh, th Happy New Year, Howard. Thank you so much. It is the Jewish New Year that it coincides with the harvest. You know, that's the way it works. And uh, I will be playing, actually, uh, high holiday services online. It's going to be virtual. You can check it out. Uh, oh, Stephen. Oh, oh, thank you, man. Stephen J., one of America's great musical talents. And Oh, Rob Blass. Hey, man. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Wally. Oh, thanks, Sonia and Roberta. Oh, Abdullah, you're speechless. Uh, in what language are you speechless? Uh, Geraldo, my dear friend. Uh, yes, uh, the Andrew sisters. Eve. Ah, oh, Eve, yes. But Pablo, great Brazilian harmonica player. Uh, yeah, I didn't know I was going to sing. Uh, actually, our sound crew here was very surprised that I was going to sing too because uh, <laughs> I had no idea I was going to do it. Oh, thank you, Aaron. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's fun to stand up and play. You know, I, I like standing. Oh, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Troy. I, I stand when I play with my band, the Howard Levy Four, because... It gives me much more, much more freedom to play the harmonica in a loose way. Lenny Tristano, yes, you better believe I was channeling a little Lenny Tristano, one of the most amazing uh, jazz pianists uh, of the f 50s and 60s. Uh, brilliant theoretician. Yeah, Mad Cat. Oh, hey, Dale. Zignisht. Ah. Steve Marchena, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Pablo, I miss you too. I wish I could come down to Brazil, but... Our two countries are the least safe places in the world right now. And so I guess it's time to wrap it up. Um, the little hamsters that are running around uh, powering the electricity in here are getting really tired. 
they need some some refreshments and so uh, I'd really like to um, to thank all of you who tuned in and uh, once again remember donate to the Greater Chicago Food Depository that's why we're here as well as spreading some musical joy so uh, next week I'm going to be doing a tribute I would call it that to my musical hero John Coltrane playing some of his uh, some of my favorite compositions of his and some original works of mine uh, to honor him so I hope that all of you tune in it'll be I think it's one day off from his birthday uh, I believe that's why uh, I'm doing it now at this present time so thank you all and I hope to see you soon at the next Thursday night happening. Gracias.